burden uh, to um, address the factors under the case. Um, so uh, my intention for this afternoon is to have Ms. Boone proceed first with anything that she'd like to tell me. I will hear from the state if they have any position on the matter, and then I'll hear from you, and then uh, the court may be in a position to make a ruling at that time. Thank okay? You, yes, ma'am. Have a seat back there. Or wherever you feel most comfortable. I can just sit back there while she... Okay, thank you. Until you're, until you're ready to oh, thank you, ma'am. All right, Ms. Boone, you can proceed, ma'am. First and foremost, I do not know what it is that you are referring to. When you say you do not know what I'm referring to, what do you mean? Um, file, uh, motions were filed by the WFTB and the Orlando Sentinel. Yes, ma'am. So um, there was a motion for to intervene for the limited purposes of opposing closure. It was filed on August 12th by WFTV. Uh, it was sent to you by U.S. Mail at the uh, correct inmate legal mail address on August the 12th. And the Orlando Sentinel's motion to intervene and notice of joinder was filed um, on August 13th. Um, and it reflects, it's, it said the certificate of service was August 13th, and it was sent to you at the same um, legal mail correspondence address at the Orange County Jail. Have you received either of those motions? I have not. Okay, I have copies. Oh, perfect. All right. And then I do apologize on the simple one, but did you work with them for a little while? So, well, we took it to file yesterday and actually got filed. Th that's why I was saying it. The certificate of service reflects the 13th, but the filing information is of this morning. Um, all right. Ms. Fugate has, um, I am pronouncing your name correctly, am I not? Yes, Fugate. Thank you. Ms. Fugate has provided copies of those motions. So, Ms. Boone, if you'd like to take a look at those, feel free to take your time to review them. And then after you've review, reviewed them, I may have the opportunity to answer any questions you have about them if I can, and then we can, uh, we can proceed. Your Honor, there are also some circuit court cases that I know are in the report that might be part of mine. I have extra copies of those if anybody would like them. If, if you want to provide those to sure. um, Ms. Boone as well, you can do so. Thank you. State, do you need a copy of them? Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. If I may say, yes, ma'am. Um, one of my topics of discussion, as you know, are the requests in regards to the laptop and internet being one of the most important. Would I have had access to that? I would have already had this and not had to sit here unprepared. Um, I believe that is a major violation to my due process of me not having these in advance um, to prepare properly and to utilize the court's time and everyone else is here by me having to do this now. So I wanted to put that out to you that I am unprepared for this. I did not know that I had a statement to prepare as everyone else did also prior to being here. Ma'am, you were provided the case law as you had requested at our last hearing. It was mailed to you. You asked for the case law that the court was making reference to. You specifically asked for it. So, that was provided to you. It was mailed to you. Case law? Yes, ma'am. What was the date that it was mailed? August 9. What was provided to you on August 9 was the additional copy of the pro se packet as provided by the Justice Administrative Commission. You were provided a hard copy of that in court mm -hmm. along with <clears throat> the case law that was referenced at the August 9 hearing that the court had said that it had reviewed in anticipation of the hearing that we were having this afternoon. I don't have that. The only thing that I was provided was that there's a provision of witness list um, from the state and then the JAC packet. Those were both provided to you in court. You are correct. The balance of the things that I'm speaking about were mailed to you at the legal mail address on August 9th. Which I have yet to see. Okay. Ma'am, with regard to... This is the first time I'm seeing each one of these documents. I understand that. They were filed August 12th and unfortunately this morning due to an issue with the e-portal. I wouldn't have internet access anyway to receive those. 
they were sent to you via U.S. mail as well. Yesterday? Yes. So I, you're not wasting the court's time. You can feel free to review those at this time. Is this the case law you're referring to? State versus Smith? I believe that those are the circuit court opinions that are referenced in WFTV's motion, which cite to the Miami Herald versus Lewis decision, which is the controlling law on this matter. <clears throat> I'll be And these are mine to take. Thank you. I'm ready whenever the court is. There's only so much that I can do just not receiving these. I have any opportunity to look up any case law of my own in the meantime, so. You can proceed, ma'am. What is it that you'd like to tell me <clears throat> about your concerns regarding the September 3rd evidence viewing that's been previously scheduled? My concerns, it is regarding my case and the whatever is left evidence that is not already on the internet or posted anywhere on social media. And I'm wondering what the reasons for the court other then sensationalism and exploitation, the purpose would be for them to watch me look at the remaining bit of my evidence that has not been globalized. Um, again, my main concern is it is for exploitation purposes, which has already been greatly um, applied to my case in many, many ways globally again. And I see on a couple of, on the motion to intervene for WFTVs, my question is, why is this an important criminal proceeding? I don't, and why do they need to have it monitored? I don't understand the reasons why just for this one, I'm not asking for all of my other hearings to be closed. Simply, this is my one and only It is my right to have some kind of privacy regarding my case. Nonetheless, it is an active case. And it's my understanding that some information is not able to be publicized due to privacy. And it's not their right to pry and exaggerate, which is the whole point of why they want to be included in this one and only most important hearing that I would say um, that I have on the horizon. The press doesn't have a right to press themselves into everything in regards to my criminal, active criminal case. And I feel that from this, one meeting should be close to the press so I can rightfully, lawfully do what I need to do in order to properly, rightfully and lawfully defend myself. At this point, I feel that there's nothing even suppressible in my case that is not already on the internet and have been spread all on the internet. I'm trying to salvage whatever it is that I can possibly to have a card to play at least one in the end during my trial. I do not feel that it is right lawfully to have them included in this hearing, this one hearing, and I am asking for their admittance to be closed. Okay. This is an active, ongoing investigation. Anything else, ma'am? No, Your Honor. State, do you have any position on Ms. Boone's closure motion? No, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Fugate? Thank you, Your Honor. I think Ms. Boone's argument really flips the question. It's not why the media wants to be there. Um, what transpires in the courtrooms, even pretrial hearings, is public property, and there's a right to be there. Um, I'm not going to go over the Lewis test because I know Your Honor knows it knows it well, but it's a very strict standard, and it's the plaintiff's burden to meet. Um, 
I haven't seen a case in Florida where a criminal case was closed on a defendant's privacy concerns. Um, we're not talking about third party privacy concerns or something that's not inherent in the proceeding. This is the evidence. Um, and even with respect to the evidence and it being an active, um, uh, still an active case, Florida law is clear that once discovery is provided to the defendant and accessible to the defendant, that becomes public record. Um, that too becomes open to the public. So with respect to the first part of the analysis, I don't think the defendant has um, established that this hearing needs to be closed to protect her fair trial rights. Um, publicity isn't necessarily synonymous with prejudice. She has to show widespread, adverse, hostile publicity, and then specifically show why that publicity is going to be aggravated um, by access to the September 3rd hearing. Um, the discovery in this case has been public. Um, I'm not sure what specifically would be aggravated by access to the hearing. Um, so I don't think she's met that first burden under, under Lewis. Um, and importantly, the admissibility of evidence, Ms. Boone said she didn't think there was anything suppressible, but even if there was, courts often suppress evidence but still allow access to the hearings and the evidence themselves. Um, that's fairly routine. That alone, just the potential admissibility, that alone is not a sufficient reason under Lewis to, to close a hearing. Um, and as your honor is aware, there's plenty of alternatives under the second factor to protect the defendant's fair trial rights. You know, careful questioning and jury selection can protect against publicity. Um, the courts of this circuit have had their fair share and are well familiar with high profile cases, and they are well equipped to insulate and protect juries from even prejudicial publicity. And finally, it has to, any closure would have to be effective and broader than necessary. Again, I'm not sure why the hearing would need to be closed, but I think even Ms. Boone has indicated it would be ineffective with what's already out there. And that was a consideration under Lewis. If the information is out there, the discovery in this case has been public, there's no reason to close a hearing that's simply going to discuss things that have already been made public. Um, I think heightened public attention only increases the need for transparency. Um, closure of judicial proceedings is a, a, a drastic remedy, and I don't believe the plaintiff has met her burden in this case, Okay. unless you have any other questions. I do not. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Any closing remarks from you, Ms. Boone? Yes, Your Honor. First, I'm only asking for this one hearing, which is a very important hearing. Um, I believe that the press is simply in it for ratings and uh, publicity. My evidence is active um, and I'm trying to salvage the little bit of anything that I have pertaining to my evidence that is not available online, which would be in that hearing. And I also her she was speaking in regards to once discovery has been received, that is therefore public <laughs> record. I just received my discovery for the first time and I'm still reviewing most, if not all of it. And I have not had the time to go through all of it, but I literally on the record just received my discovery to even have an opportunity to prepare to review any of that. And in regards to the hostile publicity, I have letters, I have messages, I have uh, tablet information, I have an entire folder dedicated to publicity in more than one way as being hostile, good, bad, ugly, it's publicity. This will incredibly enhance my inopportunity to have a fair trial because of the already millions of viewers that I have in my case, literally in my case, this would just contribute to it even greater. I'm not asking for all hearings to be closed. I've not had an opportunity to review my discovery, which I just received. I have an entire folder and more information and letters and evidence in regards to publicity, hostile, any type of emotion that you can come up with, I have received uh, from um, Australia being the most recent. So I do not believe just because they would like to, again, in my opinion, for ratings and for publicity. It's one hearing. There also is a solution that I believe my understanding was that this could be held at the Orange County Sheriff's Department. 
the question was in regards to transport, which is a possibility. It was, it was a matter of the decision being with the court. I would like to be able to properly prepare for this, what I have received everything prior as everyone else did. Having the internet would have helped also in regards to receiving the notice via email. As everyone else had, I'm sitting in front of you, yes, unhandcuffed, but I am unprepared for this uh, rebuttal in regards for me to have privacy, expected privacy to a certain degree and by law to have this one hearing closed. And we also have an active case that is ongoing, active evidence, and there's a solution for it to be held at the Orange County Sheriff's Department as well. Okay. Anything else from the state? I, I wasn't going to bring it up until after the ruling on the motion, but the parties have reached an agreement to do this on our own. And as soon as that gets accomplished, if it's accomplished to both of our satisfaction, then I'll let the court know so you can create the hearing time. Okay. We'll address that momentarily. Ms. Fugate, anything else? All right. Um, under the Miami Herald versus Lewis case, ma'am, Ms. Boone, you had the burden of producing evidence and proving by a greater weight of the evidence that closure is necessary. What has been presented today has failed to meet that burden. Your motion to close the September 3rd viewing is denied. The court will follow up with a written order that you'll be hand delivered today. Ms. Fugate, if you don't have no longer any business before this court, you are free to go, ma'am. Thank you. Have a pleasant afternoon. <clears throat> Just Mr. J. Yes, ma'am. Forgive me. When you stated to the court that my motion was oral, was this during the last hearing that we had? You requested this both, ma'am, on August 5 and on August 9. What was it specifically that I requested? You had requested privacy with regard to the September 3rd hearing. And I advised you that I needed to look at the law on it. And you asked again on September 9th when we were going to address it. I said that we would address it on the 14th. You asked for copies of the law, and those were mailed to you on the 9th. Which I have yet to receive. And I was not aware of, I was not instructed by anyone in the court, including yourself, that that was an oral motion. If I needed to actually do a proper motion, I would have correctly done so. That, that's why we had the hearing, ma'am, because you asked for it orally. So you orally moved or tenuously moved to have that motion heard. And we set it up for today since we already had the hearing time carved out to address um, you receiving the hard copies, which seemingly has already been remedied. And last week when we had our hearing on the 9th, I said, I don't want to lose that hearing time because we already had it carved out. So we would proceed with the, uh, the hearing on the privacy issue at that point in time. You then asked for the case law. I said, absolutely, I will get it to you. Mr. J had advised that he was familiar with the, the case law. Uh, but regardless, it was provided to all parties and mailed to you on the 9th. Which I have yet to receive. And I was not instructed by anyone in the court that that was a, an oral motion for me requesting privacy. I thought it was just a comment that I could have on record. Ma'am, do anything further. We, well, that's why we set the hearing, because it was something that you had asked for. And that's clear in the order that was provided to you on the 9th as well. It says that we would have a hearing today on the 14th. And when did I receive this? Well, that was orally told you on the 9th. The letter itself was mailed to you on the 9th. But the order itself was read to you during the course of that hearing. Specifically, on August 14th, 2024, at 1.30 p.m., a hearing will be held in courtroom 12A, Orange County Courthouse, 425 North Orange Avenue, Orlando, Florida, 32801, regarding defendant's review of the USB drug drive, which contains the state's digital evidence. The defendant's August 7th letter to the court, uh, delivered to the court on August 9, and the media's participation in the physical evidence viewing on September 3, 2024, the pertinent case law is attached. That was all addressed with you, ma'am, on August 9, here in open court. In the order I have yet to receive. But it was read to you, ma'am. It was read to you as to what we would be doing today and that we would be addressing the issue regarding the media's participation. And that's when you asked for the case law. And I said, I will give it to you. Absolutely. And it was all mailed to you on the 9th. I'm not ever sure of what it is that I'm supposed to be doing with, I guess now, oral and also in writing. And again, I'm sitting here waiting empty handed for everything that was mailed to me day before yesterday and or could have been readily available on the internet, which I do not have access to. So 
So I'm guessing that your verbalization of the order that you read to me, which I have not received, is supposed to suffice. Ma'am, you were told about the hearing in open court on Friday, August 9th. If I knew to be prepared, I know that everyone knows that I would be prepared, which I am unprepared because of. That's certainly your opinion that you're entitled to. Any reason for Ms. Fugate to remain? State? Okay. From the state. All right. Ms. Boone, any reason why counselor for the Orlando Sentinel and WFTV should remain? No. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right. In addition to what was set to be um, addressed today, which was the um, Ms. Boone's review of the USB jump drive, which contained the state's digital evidence, um, Ms. Boone's August 7th letter regarding her requests from the Orange County Jail. Um, Mr. Jay, you made reference to um, a potential change in the September 3rd meeting. I wanna, I wanna hear about that, sir. Uh, I believe we have reached an alternative solution to an evidence view with the defendant. And as soon as that is accomplished to both parties' satisfaction, then I will uh, notify the JA so that we can release your hearing time. Okay. I know it's valuable. Uh, can you explain to me what the um, proposed plan is for the viewing? Uh, there will be a time and place uh, where the evidence will be brought, the defendant will be brought, and she will be given as much opportunity to experience an evidence viewing like a defense attorney as possible. Uh, her investigator will be there and allowed to take photographs uh, and ask if he wants any particular bag of evidence opened uh, so that it can be photographed, um, and inspected, tested, copied as provided by 3220 and the criminal procedure rules. Uh, and then the evidence will be brought back to where it's stored and then and it will be brought back to the Orange County. Okay. Have you had a conversation with Ms. Boone prior to today regarding this proposal? Well, with Mr. Lane, who has indicated um, her position, which was that she agreed. Okay. All right. Uh, Ma'am, I don't want to go into specifics of what you've had with your investigator, but has he relayed to you uh, what Mr. Jay just advised the court of? Um, yes, to a certain degree. It has not been fully explained because it is in the process of being um, spoken about between the two of them. So yes, I do know that that is a solution to my request. Okay. And did you understand what Mr. J advised the court of today regarding how that process for you viewing um, the physical evidence would be? If you could please do so again. Sure. If you could explain it again for, uh, for Ms. Boone, Mr. J. Um, when the defense attorney wants to do an evidence view, it can go to where the evidence is stored and the law enforcement agency. He or she can bring an investigator <coughs> and an investigator they, they photographs if so requested. Um, we typically don't let the defense attorney manipulate the evidence him or herself. The CSI, who would be present as well, which is a crime scene investigator from the law enforcement agency, would be the person to manipulate the evidence on the cutting paper. And then have the opportunity to review, test, inspect each piece of evidence. So, for instance, I'm not saying it's the evidence, but a piece of clothing with the front, with the back, you have the CSI turned inside out, those sorts of things. And then it can be documented by an investigator with photography um, Between each piece of evidence, there's a new piece of cutting paper, butcher paper laid down so that there's no contamination for any potential DNA testing. And basically how the process goes on for physical evidence. If it gets opened, it'll get resealed by the CSI right there in front of all of us. And the CSI will reseal the tape, re-put his or her initials over it with a new date. So everybody will be on the same page about why it was open, when it was open, so on and so forth. Thank you for that. Um, if I may, are, are, is it closed or is it open to? No. People, people that are not involved with the case will not be there. And if I may, if you know, will my phone physically be there? If it is stored in physical evidence, then it can be brought over. We're not going to be turning it on. If it needs to be photographed or examined, it can be photographed and physically examined. But in order for it to be turned on, it would have to be done at a different location, where there's something called a Faraday box or a room where electronic signals cannot come in or out. 
Do I need to write a motion for that? Um, for what? For your phone to be brought over and turned on? Yes. If I can extract any type of information from it. So, like we discussed in the last hearing, that would be up to you to hire a, a, a digital forensic examiner, um, and then we would make arrangements with that person so that he or she could image the phone in the same manner that is imaged by law. Thank you, and great you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Then, ma'am, after having Mr. J explain that alternative solution to the evidence viewing, is that something that you would like to participate in? Absolutely. Okay. So then, is it the party's agreement to no longer have the evidence viewing here in open court on September 3? That's the state's position, but again, been doing this long enough to know that you can never predict every possible hiccup. Um, but I will defer to the court if you want to free up your hearing time now or wait until we're able to tell you that we're satisfied. Okay. Um, Ms. Boone, are you in agreement with that alternative solution? At the Orange County Sheriff's Department? Wherever the viewing is going to take place. I don't know that a specific location was identified, but yes, where it's going to take place. I am. Okay. So then here's what we'll do. Um, I will keep the hearing for now. Um, the deadline to have that viewing as set forth in the August 5 scheduling order and notice of hearing will remain of September 3. If that evidence viewing takes place um, at a law enforcement agency based on the um, protocol as identified by Mr. J, I'll just need a notice that's provided, signed by Ms. Boone, signed by the state, signed by Investigator Lane as to when it took place and how long the viewing was. Uh, and if that's provided to me, we'll then cancel the September 3rd hearing. Yes, sir, we'll do that and we can even list physical items that were brought. Indeed. My only question about that is we had sealed at the last hearing the witness list and the exhibit list. I think all the property receipts and all those sorts of things are already in the public record. Okay. I think there's a vast difference between a list of evidence that's already in the public record versus having them look at it with television cameras. In the okay. All right. Fine. Ma'am, are you uh, amenable to that additional procedure that after the evidence viewing takes place, you would sign a notice reflecting when and how long that evidence viewing was? Okay, and then once that's provided to the court, it can be filed and then the court will cancel the September 3rd hearing. Yes, ma'am. And that is done by the state? The state will prepare it. Documents and, okay. and bring them. Yes, ma'am, the state will prepare it. All you need to do is just review it and sign it. Thank you. Okay, um, all right, thank you, Mr. J, for um, providing an alternative solution. Um, Ma'am, I wanted to go back and address the, your request for um, the freedom of movement motion that we addressed last week and your desire to use a stun cuff. I understand that a representative from the public defender's office spoke to you about clothing and what they may be able to provide to you. Um, is there any preference with regard to clothing that you may have? As opposed to a skirt and pants? Correct. Yes, I very much would prefer to wear a skirt. Okay. So if you wear a skirt, as explained to you by Officer Barnett, the stun cuff is located on your calf Achilles area. It would be something that would be viewable by the jury. So you have, or do you understand that if you choose to wear a skirt for clothing purposes, that's going to be viewable by the jury? I understand. I my belief by you asking me was um, that maybe it could be moved to a higher place where it cannot be seen, or is it strictly to the one area? As Mr. Barnett or Officer Barnett explained at the last hearing, how the stun cuff is affixed to a person it is on the lower leg angle area. Okay. I'm not understanding why this is being asked because I want to bring it to your attention that if you have a desire to wear clothing, which would reveal the stun cuff, I want you to understand that it's something that the jury can and may be able to see. I understand. Is it a decision I need to make today? It's something that you need to consider. I have if you're wearing pants, they obviously cannot see it. If you're wearing a skirt, they can see it. 
and you're making a intelligent, knowing decision that they can see that and that you want to proceed with wearing a skirt. Your other option, if you do not like either of those, is the parties will remain, you'll be hands-free as we discussed, but you'll be, you'll have the leg restraints like you have today and everyone will conduct everything from counsel table, all direct examinations and cross examinations, any questioning of any witnesses, any argument, any opening remarks or closing statements, closing arguments or opening statements will be made from counsel's table. You can certainly stand, but we will not have the opportunity to walk around the courtroom. Now, I know that we talked about in our last hearing that we would have another hearing when we have our trial case management in September, addressing the box as to where everybody would go to. And last week on the 9th, I said that we would limit access to from counsel's table to the podium and we wouldn't be allowed to approach a witness or the jury. And those same restrictions would be placed on the state as well. Now, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you a series of options because if you want to wear a skirt, you have to understand that the jury can and will be able to see that device that's affixed to your leg. And by my hearings that we have spoken about the stun cuff, they are televised, correct? To the best of my knowledge, the, the media has participated in the majority, if not all of the hearings that this court has had with you. Does the court broadcast live or is it uploaded to the clerk of the court's website? What is broadcasted live? My hearings in regards to all of them, basically, but recently the stun cuff is there anyone that wouldn't know that i'm already wearing it if they could see it or not i can't i can't speak to what everybody else knows so if i may please my options are pants hiding the stun cuff or a skirt with it being visible or i am able to sit here at the council's table with leg chains on and no one is able to move except for here at the council's you'll certainly have the opportunity to stand but we wouldn't be able to uh, to move around uh, the courtroom and those same restrictions would be placed upon the state. Okay. I just wanted to confirm that those were my options. Correct. And when do I need to make that decision? You don't have to make that decision today. It's something that we can address at the trial case management in September. Ms. Click, I see you raising your hand. Your Honor, uh, I just wanted to let you, so Ms. Click, aware fully of what the options are. If you could, before you get to it, and just announce yourself for the record, please. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Uh, the, we have gone through the entire entire holding closet as well as our backup um, for what we have. As it stands right now, unless we have any donations in the size that have to match that size, we have eight pairs of pants, three skirts, and one dress, and that is every, uh, well, we do have some shirts, uh, but for in terms of skirts versus pants versus the dress, that is everything we have um, that will fit in this, in this food size range. Um, so I just wanted that to be aware so that um, if this room is making any sort of decision, she understands the limitations in terms of what we have to be able to find. Okay. Ma'am, did you have the opportunity to hear what Ms. Click said? I did. Do you have any questions for her? If you could please repeat uh, what it is that you all have available, the numbers. Eight years of pants, three skirts, one dress. Ma'am, do you have any other questions for Ms. Click regarding the clothing that the public defender is endeavoring to provide for you? And if I do come to the decision, I can't always have someone externally bring something in to me. Absolutely. You can always have someone provide something in your personal property at um, the uh, visitation center, which I described across the street from the um, Open Center. Yes. Um, that is not the public defender's office is in no way involved with that. With yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for her? All right. Can Miss Click uh, uh, be excused? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The next issue that I wanted to address was the review of the digital discovery. Uh, ma'am, Mr. Lane was provided um, at our last hearing on the 9th. Um, the hard copies of the discovery, uh, the USB jump drive, which contained the state's digital evidence and digital transcripts of the depositions of detectives Chelsea Copsell and Scott Lowen. And he was to meet with you on Saturday at nine o'clock. Did that meeting take place? 
did. Okay. What was provided to you, if anything, at that meeting? What he and I did. What was provided to you? What was given to you by Investigator Lane? Um, the digital evidence we went over, um, and we're still reviewing the discovery, but I don't recall anything physically being handed to me. Okay, all right. Um, and when you say that you went over the digital evidence, are you referring to the USB drive with the nine items that were identified in the state's exhibit list? Yes, I do have that. We have not concluded going through that. We have other meetings tentatively scheduled, which we will be concluding that also in order to meet the deadline for the objections of the 23rd of August. How many of those nine items were you able to review with Mr. Lane on Saturday? Not more than one. Okay. Were you able to access all of the nine items on that USB drive? For the brief moment that he and I were able to attempt to do so, yes, they seemed to work. Okay, you had, you had you did not have any issues opening up any of those files. I personally myself did not open all of them. Okay, all right. Okay. He's on our to do list. Ma'am, Mr. Lane also took possession of the hard copies. Have those been provided to you? They have. They were waiting at the dorm for me upon my return of the last hearing. Okay. And where are they currently? They're located at my bunk area. Okay. And what are they stored or how are they stored? The hard copies you're referring to? Yes, ma'am. The two boxes are at my bunk on the next, on the side in between other bunks. Okay. All right. Are they in some type of bag or is it just the two boxes that are right there? It's just the two boxes. Okay. All right. Do you understand that uh, you've told me that you live in the female dormitory with limited privacy? Um, you understand by keeping those boxes there, there may be a risk as to other persons looking at them. I don't have any other choice. Okay, but do you understand that that risk exists? Of course. Okay. Do you understand that there's a risk that those items could disappear? I understand. Okay. All right. <clears throat> do you understand that it's your request and choice to keep those documents in your possession? I do, and I'm also requesting in my letter to the captain and to the major to also uh, be able to store all of the USB drives and the hard drive in my locked door also for an extra security measure. Okay. All right. I see that we'd have Investigator Lane here. Sir, if you can come out, Madam Clerk's going to go ahead and swear you in. Please stay open. I do. Sir, good afternoon. Can you state your name for the record and your affiliation with Prison Break Investigations? Billy Lane, owner and chief investigator of Prison Break Investigations. All right. Thank you, sir. I did see that your notice that you provided regarding um, um, the distribution or providing the discovery. Um, you provided the hard copies and the USB with the digital and the USB with the um, depositions of the two detectives. That's correct. Okay. All right, sir. And um, when you met with Ms. Boone on Saturday, again, I don't want to go into any specifics, but were there any issues accessing any of those USB drives or any of the files? Not at the progression in which we made through the files. Okay. All right, very good. But as of right now, there's been no issues as to access from what you've reviewed. Okay, all right. Um, State, do you have any questions for Mr. Lane? No, you are. Right, Ma'am, do you have any additional questions for Mr. Lane? In regards to the drives? Correct. Based on what was teed up for hearing today, which was addressing your review of the USB jump drive, which contains the state's digital evidence. Mr. Lane, are you able to briefly meet with me downstairs after this concludes. Uh, I'm not sure if that's permissible with the policies and procedures. If not, I'm just trying to schedule a meeting with you upstairs. Okay. Any other questions for him, ma'am? No, Your Honor. All right. Can he be released? Yes. All right. State? Yes, Your Honor. Thank, right. you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you.
Okay. The next, ma'am, is your letter from August 7th to Captain Di Giovanni, which is the court has had the opportunity to read. I believe that we have a representative from the Orange County Jail who's appearing virtually. Um, if you could please unmute yourself and turn on your camera, whoever it is that may be appearing from the Orange County Jail. I have a Administrative Sergeant De Jesus on the link. Good afternoon, Judge. This is Captain Gina DiGiovanni with Orange County Corrections. I'm the captain of the Female Detention Center. And yes, I have Administrative Sergeant Stephanie De Jesus with me. All right, very good. I also want to make it clear that I have um, Orange County Corrections Department Legal Counsel Scott Chevenel on the phone with me. Okay, very good. If all of you can, uh, if the uh, Captain Di Giovanni and um, Sergeant De Jesus, if you could please, uh, I only see you, Captain. If Sergeant De Jesus can come into frame, we'll have Madam Clerk swear you in. If you both can raise your right hands. Yes, ma'am. I do. All right. Could you both state your names for the record for me again? Administrative Sergeant Stephanie De Jesus, Captain Gina De Giovanni, Security Operations, Female Detention Center, Phoenix Facility, Genesis Facility. And can I get appearances for legal counsel counsel for the Department of Corrections, please? Scott Chevenel, County Attorney's Office, representing the Department of Corrections. Okay. All right. Very good, um, Captain. Uh, have you had the opportunity to review Miss Boone's August 7th letter regarding some of the requests that she has in this case? Yes, and if it's okay uh, with you, Judge, I'd like to address each request one by one. Do you have a copy of the letter? I, I do, um, and uh, we can we can proceed with the um, seven different items that she uh, has requested. So if actually. You want so with number one, the request to have her review time extended, I can make the extension in the following fashion. We'd still have to collect the laptop at 4 p.m. This gives the, the staff uh, and supervisors the ability to conduct the afternoon headcount, the, conduct the meal dinner service, conduct the shift change, and then the evening headcount. I am willing to allow her Sunday through Thursday to get the laptop and the USB drives from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. and Friday night and Saturday night from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. That is more than the requested time that she has asked for for additional viewing. Ma'am, do you understand the extension that's being provided by the Orange County Jail regarding the laptop that on Sundays through Thursdays, additional time from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. and Fridays and Saturdays, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m.? Correct, with them collecting it at the normal 4 p.m. time. Correct. Yes. All right, do you have any questions regarding that extension? I do not. Okay, is that acceptable? All right, moving to the next issue, Captain, the USB drive security. Number two, USB drives. Uh, the, it's a matter of security, the metal tips, the uh, drive itself can be fashioned into something other than what it's originally intended for. Uh, these items are secured in a secure control room and inventory by our supervisors on every single shift. They're also inventoried and acknowledged uh, being in good working order and repair by my DSTs, the escorting officer, and my supervisors. So I will, there's, at this point, unless directed by legal counsel or, or consultation with legal counsel, uh, I believe that these drives are uh, secure and managed. This, by the way, is the same way it's managed by other facility captains, that you get a viewing period and then everything gets secured and inventory. Ma'am, do you have any questions with regard 
to the USB drive request in your letter and the position of corrections regarding it being a matter of security and how the USB drives are secured, controlled, inventoried, and confirmed to be in good working order. Um, I understand the process. My only concern is if I'm able to have my hard copy of two full boxes of my discovery, I'm not sure why other than the fact that the assumption could be made that it could be made into something other than a USB drive. And I'm trying to avoid any further leaks of information that could possibly be suppressed or utilized in my case. So I didn't know if I could have my hard copies, I'm unclear other than those reasons why I cannot have those as well. To the extent you're able to answer that question. And I would just chip in that, you know, obviously there's safety issues and you can, you can definitely distinguish between, you know, paper copies and anything made out of metal, which is what the captain just testified to. That's the problem. It sounds like to me is anything that could be a, you know, a safety hazard is a, is a, is an issue for us. So ma'am, do you have any other questions regarding the corrections department position with regard to the USB drives? What was the outcome? Uh, it sounds like they're, unless, uh, unless I've missed something, it sounds like the Orange County Jail is going to continue with their protocol of storing, inventorying, uh, and keeping the USB drives in accordance with the procedure as provided to you and read to you in open court. And that's due to metal? That's due to the reasons that were already identified. The matter of security regarding the drive being fashioned uh, in a way that may affect security, and it continues to ensure that those drives are secured, controlled, inventoried, and in good working order. So do you have any questions? Uh, could you please provide the last name of Scott, the legal counselor, please? I'll spell that, Judge, S-H-E-V-E-N-E-L-L. -L. One more time, please. S H E V E N E L L. Thank you. With regard to the third request, is to a classroom, Captain Don D. Giovanni. So uh, that classroom is a multi purpose classroom. It's used by programs and chaplain services. I cannot allow uh, the use of a classroom. What I can offer is if the defendant uh, is willing, I can move her to a housing unit and place her in a secure cell where no one will disturb her and she can review uh, and pr uh, conduct case review. She will still have access to a shower. She will still have access to open day room time. She will still have access to uh, phones, uh, but the review and her location will be in a secured housing location where she would be the only person in the cell. Ms. Boone? Captain, is this a uh, Lima dorm? K-dorm. Hello. So my only options are being moved to the maximum security dorm or it, my bunk. K-dorm is no longer a maximum security. It's a multi-purpose uh, area with inmates of varying needs uh, being secured and housed there. So it is not the maximum dorm any longer. That's correct. And I'm unable to utilize the classroom for an hour or two per day while it's dark the entire? That's correct. And if I may ask, other than it being accessed on a rare occasion of the two classes that do participate in that classroom, why is it that I'm unable to sit and be viewed by the officers at all times in my dorm comfortably to be able to utilize 
the phones on a regular basis, the day room on a regular basis, to be able to go outside to recreation to have just for fresh air. Um, how is that? I'm not understanding specifically why the reason is it has to be so extreme from going to being locked behind a door 24 hours a day to not being able to just utilize the classroom for an hour or two per day. Ma'am, you will still retain your rights as uh, an inmate and have access to all the services uh, and day room time that you currently have during the same operational hours. And instead of having to move items from a housing area into a classroom where the officer may have line of sight, I cannot guarantee that my officer will have continuous unfettered access to you to ensure the safety and security of that classroom while something may potentially occur in the housing unit. So as a matter of security to the rest of the inmates in the housing unit that you are currently assigned, my staff and the facility, I can make the accommodation where I could put you in a single person cell where you would have unfettered access, uninterrupted access to your uh, case material and still have my officers in the housing area where if you had a question or you wanted to take your shower during normal day room time, you would be able to do so. I've been in a situation where I have been behind the closed doors also when I was made PC when I first got to Orange County Corrections Department. And if it's anything like that, I do not ever want to have that experience again. And to be honest with you, forgive me, Captain, but I do not believe that it would be this simplified. And nonetheless, I'm behind a closed door for 24 hours. Is there anything that I can do, any kind of... Um, research or further explanation in order for me to to try to still be able to utilize my dorm which is general population dorm um, where I do have friends and I do have uh, some type of comfort there um, in order for me to be able to access the classroom or simply are my options from working on my bunk or to the extreme of being behind a closed door for 24 hours Captain? Uh, Judge, I'm going to object to that question. It calls for her to speculate at this point as to what all the other alternatives may be. She's simply here to, you know, responding as to this particular request, and now she's asking her this kind of this broad general question about alternatives. The objection is sustained. In regards to number four, earphones or headphones, I would need to uh, consult with legal because I don't know what the ramifications of that is. We've not had a pro se inmate ask for earbuds or headphones. I, I would have to defer to legal counsel and my chain of command for guidance in that request. With Regards to number five, internet access. Again, we've not had a pro se inmate, or at least not one that I've been responsible for, request internet access without limits. Um, so again, I need to refer to legal counsel with legal counsel and my chain of command to get guidance on that. Regarding number six, a word program, I, we've not had a pro se inmate, again, myself, that requested access to a word program. I would need to consult counsel, legal counsel, and my chain of command for guidance before we can make a re uh, response. Number seven, telephone access. In her sentence, in her statement here, as you are aware, my dorm contains pay phones only and are limited to only 15 minutes per call, which are collect. 
I need to be able to communicate on a regular, normal phone to make any all necessary calls. Hold on, I'm turning the page. For my case to use in trial. I have no other way to contact anyone that is not collect, which incredibly, I believe that diminishes. I don't know what the other word is here. If not all of my opportunities to properly prepare. Uh, the phone system that we currently have in the jail for the inmates to access is as is. I don't have the ability to make any modifications. Number eight, discovery hard copies. It seems that uh, Ms. Boone already has access to her hard copies. Um, the concern I have to do now is do some research with legal and uh, my chain of command because it all, that quantity of paper can potentially become a fire hazard and we have standards in, in place and judge, I'm not certain if you're familiar with the Florida model jail standards, but the quantity of paper is actually the problem. So we may have to come back to the table for a different type of resolution regarding um, the two cases of paper discovery. All right, ma'am, do you have any questions regarding Captain Giovanni's and the Orange County Jail's position with regard to the earphones, headphones, internet usage, word processor, telephone, and the concern regarding the hard copies and it being a fire hazard. I do, and I was also including number three, the classroom utilization. Um, I just want to make it clear and in open court that I want to have the understanding with everyone that it is an option of mine to decide to remain on my bunk with this discovery in the laptop and it is or my option to be moved but I have uh, the ability to make that decision judge I have no objection to that I am uh, not looking to impede anybody's ability to access to a general population housing unit I was simply offering an option that would be amenable to security and potentially Ms. Boo. All right. Okay. Um, am I able to proceed? You can. Thank you. Um, so for my understanding right now, you need to speak to uh, your legal counselor in regards to the headphones, the internet, the word program, and um, the discovery hard copies, which I already have. Is that correct? and telephone access. Oh. You want un unfettered telephone access if I read your letter correctly. Reasonably, I would like to have access to a regular phone. It could be one, maybe two times a week where I save all of my calls for a particular day. I'm always up for solutions, just whatever it is that I can do in order to progress properly. Um, and expeditiously, I'm trying to do so by having this where I am confused why this was not all um, solidified prior to the implementation of the laptop. So I'm, um, I'm very, uh, I'm waiting for uh, whatever it is that I can do to fully access and become a pro se defendant and inmate. Do you know when, uh, how long the deadline might be for the open-ended items that I would be waiting for? Judge, this is Scott Sherman. I'll, I'll chip in with the legal piece of The legal piece of it is simply that she's a pro se inmate. She's not the pro, first pro se inmate that the jail has had. We've had several. And the issue is whether or not there's any constitutional or statutory violation with what we provide pro se inmates. And I would argue that there's not. Um, she has access to the court as required by the law. Everything she wants is over and above 
you know, what our typical stance is for pro se inmates. And there are all those policies are in place for a reason. But somehow she wants to go beyond that and she wants all this extra consideration, more than anybody has ever been given, uh, frankly. And at the end of the day, again, it's a constitutional question. Is it a violation of her constitutional rights, the, the restrictions we have in place? And I would tell you it's not. Is that a position... Uh, counselor that you're taking today because Captain Di Giovanni had stated she needed to consult with legal counsel as to the issues of the uh, headphones, internet, word processing, telephone um, issues. Is that the position that you're taking today or is that something you need to further uh, investigate to have a, a, a final position as to that? No, that's my piece of it from the legal end. Now, of course, she, she's got to talk to her folks as far as the security end of it, because a lot of those things are in place because of security concerns. Uh, but from a legal concern, I, you know, I can easily answer that today. And the answer again is, you know, she's she, uh, legally she's allowed access to the court and all these other things that she wants. And really, and, and I'll tell you what the case law says. The case law says if she's pro se, she's entitled to get, you know, a paper, paper, a pencil, and some stamps and some envelopes and those types of things. You know, the idea that she wants unfettered access with the phone and she wants to make calls all day and night. At the end of the day, I'll, t I'll also say there's case law out there that says, you know, she's gone through, I think, eight attorneys in this case, and she had attorneys, several attorneys appointed to her case, and she's kind of put herself in this position today. And, uh, and the case law is not real favorable to folks that put themselves in that position. Ma'am, do you have any other argument with regard to these requests mm -hmm. as to the headphones, internet, word processor, or telephone? So my understanding is that I'm being penalized by Orange County Corrections Department because of their misunderstanding in regards to my, in quotes, eight attorneys prior. Is that why I'm unable to have anything in order for myself to properly represent myself as a pro se defendant and inmate of the Orange County Corrections Department? I'm, I'm not going to answer that question. Not being penalized, just the opposite. She's being treated like every other pro se inmate in the institution. She's not being penalized at all. She wants consideration over and above what everybody else has. If I may please, what is over and above? What other pro se inmates, what is it that they've asked for? I don't see how they could successfully even represent themselves without internet and a regular working phone. And I'm pretty sure that they were not able to complete their case and the uh, success, successful outcome that they were hoping for by being provided simply papers and pens. Counselor, if you... I'm not, sure, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if she's asking me a question. I don't know if I'm a, a witness in this case or if she's trying to ask me a question. I, I, I'm not... You're. You're just simply the attorney for uh, right. one of the participants, sir. If you don't, you're under no obligation to answer that question. You are just providing your legal position with regard to the uh, Miss Boone's demands and requests. Right. They're simply requests. And I'm not sure who it might be that could answer my question, please, in regards to what prior or present other pro se defendants and inmates right. have requested. So I might have a guideline of something to go with a forward. And I, again, do not know what is above and beyond simply asking for more than paper and pens in order to properly and rightfully and lawfully represent myself. Counselor, to the extent you want to respond to that, you can. Yeah, I mean, Judge, like I said, we've got tons of pro se inmates that have come through, that are there right now, that have come through the jail, and they get standard, you know, standard treatment. And she wants a lot of things that are over and above that. Uh, for instance, again, unfettered phone calls. She wants to keep things in her cell that she can't normally keep, that they wouldn't allow folks to keep. Um, so there's a lot of issues. I mean, that's a wide open question, but you know, can I speak to everything that everybody's got in the past? How many pro se inmates we've had that have come through the institution? No, but I can tell you that, uh, you know, we could probably find plenty of examples if need be as to what people have received in the past. And it's nothing, what she's nothing close to what she's requiring or requesting today. Okay. Ma'am, with regard to your state, do you have any position with regard to any of these matters we've addressed? Okay, thank you. All right, ma'am. So with regard to your request as to the laptop, um, this jail will be able to accommodate your request and those extensions will be provided as placed previously on the record. With regard to your request to hold the USB drives in your own personal lockup for the reasons identified by counsel, uh, Chevenel, uh, it's a matter of security and the protocol 
which secures, controls, inventories, and ensures in good working order the USB drives will be complied with, so that request uh, will not be accommodated. Your request for a classroom similarly cannot be accommodated for the reasons identified by uh, Captain Di Giovanni on the record. However, there is an alternative housing offer that can be provided for you. With regard to your request for headphones, um, that has been uh, rejected and denied by virtue of uh, legal counsel's argument and what is being provided to you. With regard to the internet, word processor, and telephone, again, uh, for the reasons that uh, counsel for Orange County has identified, those cannot be provided to you. The court does note that you do have the services of an investigator. And uh, JAC provided you $10,000 and $1,000 for travel for your investigator. To the extent as requested for the purposes of internet for locating witnesses and experts, you have a personal uh, private investigator that can utilize, uh, who can do that for you. I know you've made requests previously to look at your phone to find contacts and information. You also have a private investigator who would accomplish some of those tasks for you. Um, and those can be communications and conversations between yourself and your investigator as to who and when and where and what persons you might be able to uh, seek to find. So for those reasons regarding the headphones, internet, word processor, and telephone, based on arguments of counsel for Orange County, I'm unable to um, accommodate those requests. The jail is unable to accommodate those requests. Those requests will not be provided. With regard to the hard copies, um, that's going to have to be a matter. If it needs to be addressed, it can be readdressed with regard to the potential fire hazard. Captain D. Giovanni, would that still be an issue with regard to the fire hazard based on the amount of paper if uh, Ms. Boone elected to move to the uh, uh, secured housing in the K dormitory? Uh, yeah, the, it's basically the Florida Model Jail Standard 7.12. The officer in charge of designee shall determine what personal items may be kept in the cell or stored with the inmate. However, an inmate shall be allowed to retain a reasonable amount of personal property, including but not limited to his or her legal material, personal hygiene items, writing paper, and writing instrument, and authorized reading materials in reasonable quantities as approved by the officer in charge of designee. Personal items will be kept in an orderly manner, free, I'm sorry, fire potential, is reduced by limiting the amount of personal property in the cells. So it is the sheer volume of paper, and uh, that is what I need to conduct an evaluation from. Now, in Miss Boone's letter, if you give me one moment. In number eight, discovery hard copies, she writes the following, as I am presently, I can keep these in my, in the permitted property bag discreetly located at my bunk. I will purge the documents I have now and keep only new discovery hard copies. The remaining I can send to the property department and will purge anything already being stored for easy convenience and extra space. I'm willing to see what she's going to purge and send to property. But I, it, at the end, I have to reduce any fire liability to the building in order to maintain security and safety for the 399 other inmates that I have here, along with the almost 100 or so assigned staff, civilian and certified. I uh, will also say that pro se inmates in the past have been afforded a second 
fire retardant property bag and I'm willing to issue a second fire retardant property bag to accommodate the excess, but anything over and above that, we may have to find an accommodation. And based on the willingness of the of the letter that Ms. Boone has uh, written, she articulates clearly that she's willing to purge and send a property, any paper that's over and above. Do you have any questions? And I, well, no, go ahead. And I I'm can sorry. have that second property bag upon her return this evening. Okay. Ma'am, do you understand the second fire retardant bag that could be provided to you regarding the hard copies of the discovery. I do, and it was already provided to me, but the boxes unfortunately do not fit in the bag where I did attempt numerous times and even had others try to help me put it in the bag. I also did not know that they were fire retardant bags. I have the one already uh, at my bunk, and I'm in the process of trying to figure out what needs to be purged. I also have my second family law case that I'm trying to be able to obtain those copies at my bunk as well because of the difficulties of receiving and delivering anything to the property department, which is why I came up with the solution of me trying to purge what I can specifically to be specifically removed from the jail completely by a friend who can come and pick that up. I was just waiting for this thing to happen so I can figure out when to tell her to come to do so. So is that accommodation acceptable? It is. I returned the second fire retardant bag, property bag, because I didn't want to have anything extra on top of my extra already. And it is not able to be used for anything that I can put in there where I already have everything in the boxes in the one bag already being occupied. Are you satisfied then with regard to the treatment, for lack of a better word, of the hard copies? What do you mean by that? Sure. Are you, uh, the procedure for having them stored and where they're kept is identified today, is that acceptable to you? meaning I can have them where I have them now? That's my understanding. Judge, may I say something here? Sure. Okay, and thank you for allowing me the uh, interruption. The, the cardboard boxes are not authorized by the fire marshal. The fire retarded bags are. So the the documents are going to have to come out of the cardboard box and into the fire retardant bags. Ms. Boone? I would have to figure that out for the voluminous amount of paperwork that are contained in those two boxes. And there is no way to organize or separate. So it would just be a large mass amount of papers so if I may, in the meantime, try to come up with some type of organizational structure of those two fire retardant bags with my hard copy discovery enclosed in those, if I could please do so. Mr. Chevenel, I'm... Captain Giovanni, is there any way we can give her an additional bag or so and she can switch it in and out of property or whatever it may be? Can we provide her an additional bag that may help her to uh, separate her documents? I could provide the third fire retardant bag, but uh, it, it's the encroachment into another inmate's area. It's a limited space, uh, but the cardboard box can't remain. Man. And judge, if you recall my request, I had asked for all of this to be placed on a USB drive so that we would not have the paper in the jail for this very reason. I, and I understand that. Um, and Ms. Boone has re continued to request the paper copies. Um, and that's why everything was digitized so that she would have that access to it. Everything has been digitized, uh, but she has continued to request for those. And we're trying to make uh, that accommodation for her as well. Um, okay. Yes. Um, Scott, if everything's digitized, why do we have to get the paper? Uh, that's up there if she wants paper or not, that's, that's fine. 
All right. It was never my decision to have anything digitized in the first place. And nonetheless, it's being put on a laptop that is not even fully accessible because some of the programs do not work, which I have not had the time yet to continue to go through everything that are on the USB drives. And um, that being not my decision and nonetheless, and most important to me, they are limited and restricted to particular time periods. When well, those laptop times are closed for the day, I can therefore pick up the hard copy discovery, be it in a fire return it bag or in a cardboard box or whatever else it is that I'm able to keep them there at my bunk. I have that as plan B when plan A is closed. Judge, if um, I might be able to offer a resolution here. Okay. What we uh, was the, the, the discovery that Ms. Boone received was it just a stack of papers in the box or was there any type of manila envelope or filing separation system? I haven't looked at them. I haven't copied them. They were opened in court uh, back in, I think, June 28th when we had the hearing where the court found that Ms. Boone had forfeited her right to court-appointed counsel and alternatively have waived that right by virtue of her conduct. Um, I believe the box was open at that time, and I there may be manila folders uh, for some of the items, but I can't speak to all of it. I haven't reviewed it. I'm not able to review it. Would Ms. Boone be able to indicate whether there, the paper is free-flowing paper or was it bound in some way? All the Ms. Cashman had represented that all staples had been removed and all paper clips had been removed. Ms. Boone? It is a mass amount of paper. Um, are there dividers? Are there manila folders? There, I believe, are two manila envelopes that have contents inside. And everything else is just free paper? As far as my understanding is, yes. I've not been able to fully dive into the boxes quite yet because of waiting for. Uh, information for this, but I can further uh, explore once I return back to the dorm. I can provide some manila folders without any type of clasp or string in order to get the cardboard boxes out of the building. I understand, and that would be appropriate. I don't know if I'm limited to a certain amount on top of the specified pen and papers I am able to have. Um, my question is, I would like to know also, please, for the reasonable quantities that you quoted earlier in regards to the amount of paper, is that the definition that you provided, is that for the um, enclosed housing area or is this also for general population? Ma'am, I'm responsible for, uh, based on the Florida model jail standards, to reduce the amount of paper clutter uh, in all living spaces. It's not specific to just your housing unit. Thank you. So Captain, I... Captain D. Giovanni, Captain D. Giovanni, does that net now, can she switch out and get things out of the property within reason uh, if there's additional documents in the, in the, in the, in her property? Through the request form, if she, you know, we're going to authorize the second uh, fire retardant bag. We're going to uh, offer some manila envelopes without a metal clasp or a string so that she could get everything into the fire retardant bags. And then we're going to remove the cardboard boxes, which are what becomes the or is the fire risk because it is not authorized or recognized as a you know fire retardant item based on the fire marshal the only thing mm -hmm. that's con that they consider fire retardant is is the bag and again i will provide that uh, and then anything in excess she could send to the property room well, and then upon her need for it, she could write a request to the property room and the property room will bring it over. But she'll have to swap it out. I'm amenable, uh, you know, I'm amenable to her keeping her 
documentation. I'm not looking to take anything away from her, but it has to be in accordance with, you know, fire marshal and policy. I understand. And I would be happy to comply with the extra bag and the manila envelopes for separators in regards to that. So ma'am, if the jail was to provide you those manila folders for the hard copies and a third fire retardant bag, is that acceptable? It is. If I do conclude that I need anything additional in order for them to be able to be held together in regards to some type of rubber band or some type elastic, something to be able to bind the paperwork together, is that a possibility? I didn't hear the question. You may have to speak more clearly into the microphone in front of you, ma'am. Would I be able to please, if I needed uh, to have a type of rubber band or some kind of elastic in order to bind? No. And I know, Captain, that you are aware uh, the courtroom is not in regards to the um, property bags that you all do supply. There's no rigidity to them whatsoever. It is just a floppy bag. So when you pick that up, everything goes in the middle. So there's no type of, uh, there's no way of actually being able to make sure that one pile stays in the one pile and so on and so forth. Do you have any suggestions other than manila folders that I might be able to utilize in order to keep those together? The purpose of the manila envelopes is that you would put the paper in the manila envelope and that manila envelope keeps the paper in order. Okay, so they're envelopes, not folders. Correct. Thank you. Ma'am, is that acceptable to you? And is there anything else we need to address with regard to the hard copies? Not in regards to the hard copies, no. Okay, all right. Is there anything else, ma'am, that we need to address today, Ms. Boone? Um, yes, please. If I may conclude with the remaining amount of questions that I have in regards to my requests. Sure. Um, is it Mr. Shebamel? Yes. Could you please provide me with uh, the protocol or policy that you will have a guideline for me to follow, please, in regards to what previous pro se inmates may have uh, had access to and be able to utilize? Do you have anything in writing as a hard copy? We we'll have to check on that. Are you, asked for, are you making a public records request? I'm sorry? Are you making a public records request? I'm, I'm unclear of your question. I was just asking if Orange County Corrections Department had any type of guideline that you are accusing me of going above and beyond um, other than the pen and paper. So I didn't know if you had a policy or process in um, if you have a pro se packet, like JAC has a pro se packet, does Orange County provide something like that? You have to ask the jail that question. I don't know. I advise from a legal standpoint, and I can certainly tell the jail what the legal standard is. I'm not going to advise you as to what the law is, but I'll certainly advise the jail as to what the legal standard is. Yes, please. Captain, I would be responding to you in regards to that or following up with you or Sergeant DeJesus. Ma'am, we don't have any access to that. I, I don't know anything about what other inmates that are currently pro se get other than that laptop um, and the information transferred to a USB drive. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And Mr. Shabamel, you um, repeated that I have access to the court. Could you please define to me what your access to the court is for me? Yeah, I'm going to object. I'm not a witness in this case. I'm really counsel for the jail, so it's really not appropriate to ask me questions. I know I've entertained a few, but I'm really not required to answer any. Ma'am, he's not in a position to answer those questions. Um, could you please answer who might be able to? Because I am in desperate need to view the case docket, um, which requires internet, and I am still waiting for any documents that you have mailed to me. Uh, I am unprepared, it seems, every single time now sitting here at the counselor's table with not the same information and opportunity and um, advantage as everyone else in the courtroom because I'm waiting for the mail. So I didn't know if anyone had any other suggestion of how I might be able to receive those more expeditiously and in a 
timely fashion so I can be prepared in order to properly defend myself in apparently more than one uh, way for every time that I'm here in the courtroom and something new is presented to me as a surprise. So I'm just trying to avoid those. Items will continue to be mailed with you, uh, mailed to you at the appropriate address as required by the rules of judicial administration and general practice. So if I may please clarify, my understanding is the only way that I can receive anything is through the United States Postal Service. I'm not gonna answer that question because that would be me potentially providing you legal advice. But what I can tell you is that items will still continue to be mailed to you as required by those rules. If I may please just make sure that everyone is aware that I cannot be properly prepared as you can see now and prior. I just want to make sure that everyone is aware and understands. Ma'am, for the reasons that we've discussed previously, I understand that you're entitled to that opinion uh, as to uh, your pro se representation of yourself. Anything else that we need to address today, ma'am? Yes. I have a motion that I would like to submit, please. Okay. Is there any, um, is there anything else that the jail needs to participate in with regard to this hearing? Um, Captain, would I be following up with you or who would I be speaking to when I return to the dorm? In regards to what? Um, I'm wondering in regards to the guideline and when and how the discovery hard copies, um, will the, the property bags be waiting for me when I return? I will take care of that with my supervisors that are on shift. Yes. We will need the uh, cardboard box so that we can dispose of that properly. Yes, ma'am. And if I may, do you know why it was not approved prior when a supervisor was the one who delivered it to me? I have no information about even the amount of hard copies. I didn't even know that that came into the jail because I, my conversation has always been that everything would be digitized and that we would have no hard copies so I could be in compliance with the Florida model jail standards uh, Orange County Fire Marshal and our policies and procedures regarding excess amount of paper. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Thank you very much for your time. And Sergeant DeJesus and Mr. Shabamel. Okay, are they free to leave? Yes, thank you. State. All right, thank you all very much. Ma'am, you made reference to uh, another motion or something else that you had. Um, yes, I have a motion. Okay, if you can hand to the deputy behind you. Um, actually, um, deputy, can you hand it to the state? State, you can take a look at it and then I will. Thank you, sir. All right, ma'am, give me a moment to take a look at this. Court has been provided a motion for payment of costs and appointing neuropsychologist to assist the defendant in preparation of the defense. Um, state, I don't think we can have a hearing on this without JICS. Um, state takes no position. We don't have anything to do with this. Okay. Ma'am, I, I can't have a hearing on this today. Mm -hmm. I will have to coordinate a hearing with regard with JICS to um, have this heard because this is something that involves them right. and they haven't even had the opportunity to, to review it yet. And they are copied on that as well. I do see that, but you're hand filing it with me right now. Okay. Thank you. So the court will file this in the court file and we'll coordinate a hearing as soon as practical with regard to this motion and it'll be heard before the end of this week. Anything else, ma'am? Uh, just to confirm, please, for the next deadline for my responsibility to meet would be the August 23rd for the objections to the state uh, USB drive that they provided. As identified in the court's order, uh, that is the deadline. Um, the only other deadline, ma'am, is the September 3rd deadline for the viewing of the state's physical evidence, which sounds like that's something that may take place prior to that deadline. 
Uh, as you may recall, you will have 14 days after that evidence viewing to tender any of your objections uh, in writing to the court 14 days thereafter, and that will be extended for good cause shown. Anything else, State? Not from the State. Ma'am, anything else? No, Your Honor. All right. We'll return Ms. Boone back to the custody of the Orange County Jail, and uh, we'll coordinate the hearing appropriately. Thank you all very much. Mr. Ms. Um, forgive me. Um, in order possibly for a solution for me to know about uh, the hearing, especially for the one regarding the JAC, is it possible for you please to relay it to Mr. Lane and he can tell me sooner than the mail? I, I can certainly do that. Going forward, so I would have some opportunity uh, quicker than waiting for the mail. I, I can certainly advise him of that, or my office can. Sure. Okay, I understand. All right, just so that so for recap purposes, with regard to um, the motions to intervene, as first address uh, first addressed this afternoon, the court orders that the defendant has failed to meet the burden of producing evidence and proving by a greater weight of the evidence that closure is necessary as required by Miami Herald Publishing Co. versus Lewis, four two six Southern Second. One at pinpoint eight by the Florida Supreme Court, 1982. As such, the defendants requested closure of the state's physical evidence viewing with the state and defendant set for September 3, 2024 at 9 a.m. is denied. With regard to the other items that were discussed today, defendant and state agreed to an alternative arrangement as placed on the record on August 14th, 2024, regarding the viewing of the state's physical evidence as tendered in open court on August 9, 2024. The state shall prepare for all parties to execute a notice reflecting when the evidence viewing took place and the length of time that the evidence viewing took place. The state shall file with the court the executed notice after the viewing of the state's physical evidence takes place. Defendant's request regarding extending the laptop time has been agreed to by Orange County. The times have been extended as follows. Sunday through Thursday, 8, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. This is in addition to the times outlined in the memorandum from the Orange County Corrections Department Security Operations, which was previously provided to Ms. Boone and read to Ms. Boone. Defendant's request regarding the discovery that was provided to the court on June 28, 2024, um, and keeping that discovery in defendant's possession was addressed to defendant's satisfaction on the record on August 14th, 2024, and the balance of defendant's requests cannot be accommodated for the reasons placed on the record on August 14th, 2024. Ms. Boone, you'll be given a hard copy, or hand delivered a copy of these orders momentarily. Thank you. All right, anything else? Anything else, ma'am? No, All right, thank you very much. Thank you.